You're listening to The Scrimmage with Daniel Hargrove and Justin Domashevitz. Monday, good morning, afternoon, evening, and good night. I'm Daniel Hargrove. Welcome to the scrimmage. <laughs> and I'm Justin Domashevitz. We got a great show for you today. We're gonna get you all caught up in what's going on in NFL free agency. Also, we have a nice little chat with our friend of the show, Braden Dorman, senior at Montesano High School. And of course, we will get the first round recap from the March Madness Best Sitcom bracket. As well as guess what? We've got sponsors now. Yeah. This show is brought to you by Oli Penn Real Estate, State Farm Agent Mark Rossetti, and the law offices of Jeff Domashevitz. So let's get it going with the two-minute drill. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Hello. Gotta hurry, gotta hurry, gotta hurry. Hey, two-minute situation. 44 seconds. Hand the ball to ref. Gun duel right, gun duel right. Three jet buckeye. Don't worry. The two-minute drill starts now. Oh. Look, it started <laughs> and it ended. <laughs> Just gotta like hurry, gotta that. hurry, gotta hurry. Hey, two minutes. I'm not used to this. Hand the ball to ref. Gun duel right. Gun duel right. Three jet Buckeye. Don't worry. The two minute drill starts now. The Jacksonville Jaguars have traded quarterback Nick Foles to the Chicago Bears. Daniel, does the move by the Jags signal that they are all in on Gardner Minshew, or will they try to pick up a quarterback in the upcoming draft? Oh, man, I am assuming they'll pick up a quarterback, but I'm hoping that it is a late rounder that they're like, hey, we need a backup quarterback for cheap. And they give Gardner Minshew the keys and let him drive that train all the way into the playoffs because I think that he has all of the intangibles to take them where they need to go. He was great last year. Let him keep running the show. Justin, does the Chicago Bears trading for Nick Foles mean that they are ready to move on from Mitchell Trubisky? You know, I know Mitchell. Yes, Mitchell. Mitch, Mitchell, Mitch. Mitch, Mitchell. I know Trubisky has become everyone's favorite punching bag, but he's only been in the league for a couple of years. And I think one thing we know about Nick Foles is that when a team makes him the starter, he tends to underperform. So (laughs) I think it's safe to say... Like when he won the Super Bowl? I said when he is named the starter from the beginning, he was the backup and he came in. Every time he's been somewhere, basically, every time he's been somewhere and been named the starter, he struggled. I think, though, if Trubisky comes out and is terrible next year, well, hey, they'd feel really comfortable that they have probably the best backup quarterback situation in the league. So I don't think it's a signal that the Bears are ready to give up on Trubisky, but I think they feel now like they have a safe backup plan. Daniel, with the addition of free agent quarterback Tom Brady, what would you consider a successful 2020 season for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Well, they did go 7-9 and nine last season, as you put here on the show notes. Thank you. You're welcome. Otherwise, I wouldn't have known that. <laughs> Happy to help out. Yeah. Um, I think if they don't get into the playoffs, then it's a huge failure. Because they went 7-9 and nine last year with a quarterback who threw it to the other team as much as he threw to his own team. Mm-hmm. So you would think that even 42-year-old old man Brady would still be able to know what jersey to throw the ball to. <laughs> Although it is a new jersey for him. <laughs> so that might get confusing for him. But I would think that they should at least get into the playoffs. And for them, I would think that they would want to win at least one playoff game for it to be a success. Justin, had the NCAA men's basketball tournament not been canceled, who would have been your pick for national title? Well, this is a little different from normal for me. It was a really, really weird college basketball year, and none of the best teams are teams you feel like you could count on to go win six quality games in a row. I was actually very excited to unveil unveil my bracket with Dayton as my national champion. Not only do they have Obi Toppin, who I think might be the best player in the entire nation, they also have three other guys who average 10 points or more per game, and they have five players on their in their starting rotation that shoot 36% or better from the outside. There's three of their four top scorers. If you take Toppin out, we're all upperclassmen. I think this Dayton team was poised and ready to go all the way to the final and beat Gonzaga in the championship. Oh. 
That two-minute drill brought to you by State Farm agent Mark Rossetti. Thank you again for that. And I'm curious. You thought Gonzaga would have been in the final. I mean, me as the Gonzaga homer of the NCAA tournament that I am, obviously would have picked them again this year. But they haven't, I don't know, this year, you mentioned it. It was so weird. Yeah. Which makes it even weirder that we don't actually get to have a national champion. So... Well, I think Kansas would have been the number one overall seed, and I think they, they got, deserved that. They had the they were voted in the last yeah. AP ranking as the number yeah. one team. So does that make them the national champion this year? Mm, well, that's what Bill Self wants. He said you can crown us the national champions if you want to. But I think <laughs> I just you know Kansas, you really want Duke, Kentucky, like all of the main teams that are always good, the Blue Bloods. They really didn't have a stretch of the season, none of them, that would make you th- feel really confident that they could go in and win six games in a row to get to the to win the title. Exactly. So it was hard to look at it. You know, there, so often there would be one or two teams that you'd just feel really confident about. But even Kansas, who I think probably deservedly would have been the top overall seed, I don't think – I think their upset potential was really high. Whereas teams like Dayton and Gonzaga pretty much just did it all year. They were both – Really versatile, both really deep and skilled, and those would have been my my top two teams. I have a hard time disagreeing, especially I love upperclassmen when you get into the NCAA tournament. Yeah, I know that sometimes you get those freshmen just absolute freak shows. Yeah, who can take over too, but when you get into those players who are similar in talent, it seems like the senior experience really helps. Absolutely, and you really don't have that many guys that are highly skilled that stay three or four years in college anymore. So, you know, especially for Dayton, for a school like Dayton, and this was true with Gonzaga similarly, you know, you got have guys who are juniors and seniors that are some of your biggest impact players. That makes a big difference when you get down to the end. It's not just a home or a car. It's the six months you save to get your Ultra HD flat screen just in time for football season. It's the overtime you worked for that third car so that your team can drive themselves to practice. While other insurance companies just see them as a bundle or a combo, State Farm agent Mark Rossetti sees your home and car as things you work really hard for. Mark understands what your things really mean to you and is here to help you give them the protection they deserve. Visit Mark Rossetti at 613 Oak Street in Aberdeen for your home and auto insurance today.